Have you ever been walking in the forest or walking down a dark alley at night and felt that feeling that something was out there watching you? Most of the time it's just nothing. But what if it is something, something secretive, something hidden deep in the shadows that no one has ever gotten a good look at? Well, that could be the way many cryptid stories are created or introduced. Cryptids are beings and creatures that have existed and have stories created around them for centuries, with many different cultures telling their own creepy, unique stories. But anyway, if you don't know what a cryptid is, well, it's an animal or creature that isn't for sure confirmed to exist, but also not confirmed to, you know, not exist. So we don't know if they're really out there, such as Bigfoot, Loch Ness, Mothman, or even just a leprechaun. Well, in this video, we'll dive into these cryptids and their different stories. So without further ado, let's get into it. And before we start the video, subscribe. My goal for the end of the year is 50,000 subscribers, so it'd be awesome if you could help me reach that goal. It's free and you can always change your mind. And without further ado, welcome to the Cryptid Iceberg. All right, starting off tier one with Bigfoot. Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, is a legendary and elusive creature that is the subject of numerous folk tales, reports, and alleged sightings, primarily in North American folklore. Descriptions of Bigfoot typically involve a large ape-like or humanoid creature covered in hair or fur and standing between 6 to 10 feet tall. The name Bigfoot comes from the creature's large footprints, obviously, that have been found in various parts of North America, particularly in the Pacific Northwest region of the United States and Canada. These footprints are often cited as evidence of Bigfoot's existence, although skeptics argue that many of these prints are hoaxes or can be attributed to other animals despite numerous anecdotal accounts and alleged sightings, there is no conclusive scientific evidence to support the existence of Bigfoot. Cryptozoologists and enthusiasts continue to search for evidence, including photographs, videos, and DNA samples, but so far, no definitive proof has been found. Many believe that Bigfoot is a cryptid, of course, that's why it's on the iceberg, a creature whose existence has not been scientifically sustained. Others consider it a cultural or mythological phenomenon rather than a real biological entity. Bigfoot has become subject of popular culture inspiring books, documentaries, movies, and television shows that explore the mystery surrounding the weird gorilla-like creature. The Loch Ness Monster, often referred to as Nessie, is a cryptid and one of the most famous and enduring mysteries in the field of cryptozoology. Nessie is said to inhabit Loch Ness, a large freshwater lake in the Scottish Highlands. The creature is typically described as a long-necked, serpentine, or dinosaur-like creature, with humps that are visible above the water's surface. The legend of the Loch Ness Monster dates back centuries, with early accounts and stories about mysterious creatures in the loch appearing as far back as the 6th century, so this has been happening for a while now. However, Nessie's modern frame began in the 1930s when a series of perpetrated sightings and photographs captured public attention. The most famous photograph of Nessie, known as the Surgeon's Photograph, was taken in 1934 by Robert Kenneth Wilson and showed a long, neck-like object rising out of the water. This photograph fueled public interest and debate about the existence of the Loch Ness Monster. Over the years, numerous other photographs, sonar readings, and eyewitness accounts have been reported, but none have provided conclusive evidence of Nessie's existence. Efforts to search for Nessie have included scientific expeditions, sonar scans of the loch's depths, and the use of remotely operated underwater vehicles but none have produced definitive proof of the creature's existence. Many theories and hypotheses have been put forth to explain the Loch Ness Monster sightings, ranging from misidentifications of known animals, floating debris, and natural phenomena to elaborate hoaxes and optical illusions. While Loch Ness remains a popular tourist destination, and the legend of Nessie continues to captivate the public imagination, the scientific consensus is that there is no concrete evidence to support the existence of a large, unknown creature in the lake. And I'm going to stop saying that at the end of each one because obviously these can all be either proven fake because they're not real. Well, at least I don't know that for sure, but there's no conclusive evidence that shows if they're real or not, but I'll just not say that at the end. The Yeti, kind of like the long lost brother of Bigfoot. 
also known as the Abominable Snowman, is a legendary ape-like creature said to inhabit the Himalayan mountains range in Asia. The legend of the Yeti has been part of the folklore and cultural traditions of various Himalayan communities for centuries. Descriptions of the Yeti vary, but it is often portrayed as a large, shaggy, and humanoid creature, taller than an average human, with long hair or fur that helps it survive in the harsh, snowy environments of the high mountains. Yeti sightings and encounters typically occur in remote and isolated areas, making it challenging to investigate claims. While there have been numerous anecdotal accounts of Yeti sightings, as well as the discovery of mysterious footprints and hair samples attributed to the creature, there is little evidence to back it up. Many sightings and pieces of evidence can be attributed to misidentifications of local wildlife, such as bears or the effects of extreme cold and high altitude conditions on human perception. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the legend of the Yeti continues to capture the public's imagination. And uh, the, the things kind of related to Bigfoot will come up a lot inside this iceberg. There's crazy different kind of like Bigfoot sightings all around the world. So if that kind of changes your mind a little bit, that maybe there is some sort of long lost ape creature that hides deep around the world inside mountains. But who knows? All right, now already onto tier two, and now onto the chupacabra. The chupacabra is a mythical creature from the Latin American folklore, particularly in regions like Puerto Rico, Mexico, and other Spanish-speaking countries. The name chupacabra translates to goat sucker in Spanish, which reflects its supposed habit of attacking and drinking the blood of livestock, especially goats and other domesticated animals. Descriptions of the chupacabra vary, but it is commonly depicted as a reptilian or alien-like creature with spikes or quails along its back, sharp teeth, and glowing red eyes. It is often said to be roughly the size of a small bear or a large dog. Reports of the chupacabra began to surface in the mid-1990s, primarily in Puerto Rico, and quickly spread to other parts of the Americas. Chupacabra sightings and attacks on livestock were often accompanied by reports of blood-drained carcasses, which led to widespread fear and speculation about the creature's existence. Although, in many cases, the phenomenon attributed to chupacabra attacks on animals can be explained by more conventional causes, such as predation by known predators like coyotes or wild dogs, in some cases have also been linked to disease or parasites that can cause blood loss in animals. But the chupacabra is still really popular in Latin American culture and has become a part of global cryptozoology lore. While it is often considered a creature of folklore and urban legend, sightings and reports of the chupacabra-like creatures continue to emerge from time to time, keeping the mystery alive for some. The Goatman The Goatman is a cryptid and urban legend that has gained notoriety in various parts of the United States, particularly in Maryland and Texas. This creature is typically described as a hybrid or humanoid figure with the upper body of a human and the lower body of a goat, which I'm just saying it's kind of weird sounding, but honestly it would be kind of terrifying if you're walking through the forest and see a dude with goat legs. But it often has goat-like legs, hooves, and horns on its head. The legend of the goat man is similar to other folklore creatures, such as the satyr from Greek mythology. The goat man legend has various versions and origins, but it often involves a scientist, a madman, or an experiment gone wrong that results in the creation of this half-human, half-goat kind of creature. According to the stories, the goat man is often associated with rural areas, forests, and bridges, and is said to terrorize and attack people, particularly those who venture into its territory. The Mothman the Mothman is a cryptid and also an urban legend associated with Point Pleasant, West Virginia in the United States. The creature is typically described as a large humanoid being with wings and glowing red eyes. It received its name Mothman due to its resemblance to a giant moth, obviously, but particularly in terms of its wings and its eerie appearance and the Mothman legend gained widespread attention in the 1960s, primarily due to sightings and events that occurred in and around Point Pleasant, West Virginia. The most famous sighting took place on November 15, 1966, when two couples reported encountering a creature with glowing red eyes near a former World War II munitions site known as the, quote, TNT area. 
Over the next year, there were additional reports of Mothman sightings, often accompanied by strange occurrences and mysterious phenomena. The Mothman legend became intertwined with the tragic collapse of the Silver Bridge in Point Pleasant on December 15, 1967, which resulted in the deaths of 46 people. Some individuals speculated that the Mothman sightings and the bridge collapse were actually connected, which I don't really know how they made that connection, but whatever. And this notion added to the lore surrounding to the creature. While there have been many eyewitness accounts of Mothman sightings and various theories on its origin, it's pretty easy to say there's not a Mothman. But who am I to, who am I to say? And skeptics often are attribute the sightings to misidentifications of owls, sandhill cranes, or other different birds, as well as psychological factors and mass hysteria. The Mothman has become a part of American folklore and has inspired books, documentaries, movies, and even a Mothman festival held annually in Point Pleasant. The Flatwoods Monster The Flatwoods Monster, also known as the Braxton County Monster or the Green Monster, is a creature from American folklore associated with the alleged UFO sightings in Flatwoods, West Virginia on September 12, 1952. The incident is often described as a close encounter with the third kind, as it involved the sighting of both a UFO and a mysterious humanoid entity. The, th the story goes that a group of local children, along with a woman named Kathleen May, witnessed a bright object streaking across the sky and crashing onto a nearby hill. They, along with a few adults, went to investigate and encountered a strange glowing and monstrous figure that appeared to be about 10 feet tall. The creature was said to have dark hood-like shape around its head, glowing eyes, and a spade-shaped cowl or headpiece. It also emitted a noxious odor. The eyewitness accounts were frightened by the creature in the unusual circumstances and reported their encounter to the local authorities. Subsequent investigations by both local law enforcement and the U.S. Air Force concluded that the UFO sighting could be attributed to a meteorite that had entered the Earth's atmosphere and crashed into the area. As for the creature, there have been much speculation and debate. Some suggested it might have been an owl perched on a branch, but I don't think an owl was 10 feet tall. But while others believe it, it could have been a misidentified barn owl illuminated by a flashlight beams of the witnesses. The Flatwoods Monster incident remains a part of West Virginian folklore and has been subject to various books, documentaries, and articles. It is considered one of the most famous UFO and cryptozoological cases in the United States. The Steller's Sea Ape German zoologist George Steller aboard the ship St. Peter on Vitus Bering's Great Northern Expedition at around sunset on August 10, 1741, near the Shumagin Islands, Alaska. Steller reported a strange and unidentified creature floating near and around the ship. The creature stared at the ship for two whole hours, according to Steller, seemingly out of admiration. It got so close to the ship that it could have been poked by a pole, he said, but would have swam farther out whenever the crew attempted to approach it. He said it raised a third of its body out of the water, maintaining a human-like posture for several minutes. After a half an hour, the creature dove under the water and swam underneath the ship and onto the other side, and did this repeatedly about 30 different times. Steller stated that when a large seaweed stalk, about 5.5 meters long, floated by, the creature quickly slammed towards it and grabbed it with its mouth. The creature then swam closer to the ship and did juggling tricks with it like a trained monkey through eating pieces of it now and again. Steller's description of it as a sea monkey probably stemmed more from such behavior rather than the actual resemblance to the monkey and Seller attempted to collect the animal, so he took a gun and fired at it, but missed. He reported that the creature disappeared for a moment, but quickly came back, frightened, and once again gradually neared the ship. Steller fired at it again, but missed or only wounded the creature, which swam away, and it was never seen again. So, I mean, I've seen a lot of things online about it, this Steller's sea ape, and people say it's just he saw a seal that was floating around so what do you think is it actually some sort of long lost sea monkey in alaska or most likely just a seal the jersey devil the jersey devil is a legendary creature from american folklore 
particularly associated with the pine barrens of southern New Jersey. It is described as a winged creature resembling a combination of different animals, with common features including hooves, a horse-like head, bat-like wings, horns, and a forked tail. So kind of like the devil I would imagine. The legend of the Jersey Devil dates back to the 18th century and has become one of the most enduring cryptid stories in the entire United States. The most popular origin story of the Jersey Devil attributes its birth to the Leeds family of New Jersey in the early 18th century. According to the legend, a woman named Mother Leeds, who was said to be a witch, gave birth to her 13th child. In despair and frustration, she supposedly cursed the child, which then transformed into the monstrous Jersey Devil. Throughout history, there have been numerous reported sightings and encounters with the Jersey Devil often accompanied by livestock mutilations, eerie sounds, and other strange occurrences. These stories have contributed to the creature's enduring presence in local folklore and popular culture. The Living Thylacine Speculation about the existence of the living thylacines, despite their official classification as extinct, has persisted for many years. The speculation is fueled by a combination of reported sightings, eyewitness testimonies, and the enduring fascination with this iconic creature. In regions like Tasmania, where thylacines were last known to exist, there has been numerous accounts of sightings described as an animal with a slender body and distinctive stripes, resembling the thylacine. These reports have led to ongoing debates and interest in the creature's potential survival. Cryptozoologists who investigate mysterious or undiscovered animals are particularly intrigued by the thylacine status as extinct species with lingering eyewitness reports, and they are among those actively searching for concrete evidence of the creature's existence. However, despite the antecedents and the claims, no conclusive scientific evidence has ever been presented to confirm the existence of living thylacines. Clear photographs, DNA samples, or other forms of empirical proof have remained elusive. The remote and densely wooded landscapes of Tasmania offer a habitat where a reclusive or small population of thylacines could potentially remain hidden. If they do exist, they would likely be highly elusive and nocturnal animals. The ongoing speculation serves as a testament to the thylacine's historical significance and the desire to conserve and protect any potential remaining populations. Yet, till concrete evidence is provided, the scientific community generally maintains a skeptical stance and continues to classify the thylacine as extinct. And all right, just like that, we're on to tier three, starting off with the skunk ape and the other long lost brother of Bigfoot. The skunk ape is a cryptid and urban legend that is primarily associated with the southeastern United States, particularly in Florida and Louisiana and the surrounding regions. It is described as a large ape-like creature that emits a foul odor, hence the name skunk ape. Depictions of the skunk ape vary, but it is often said to be covered in hair or fur, stand between 6 to 7 feet tall, and resemble a cross between an ape and a human. Witnesses have reported sightings of the creature in swamps, forests, and remote areas. The legend of the skunk ape has been part of local folklore for many years, and there have been numerous anecdotal reports of sightings and encounters with this creature. Bunyip. The Bunyip is a mythical creature from Australian folklore, particularly among the indigenous people of southeastern Australia. The word Bunyip is often translated as devil or evil spirit in some aboriginal languages. Descriptions of the Bunyip vary widely, but it is commonly depicted as a water-dwelling creature with characteristics that can include a horse's head, flippers or fins, tusks or long teeth, and a furry or scaly body. The bunyip is often associated with swamps, rivers, and other bodies of water, and it is said to have a nocturnal and reclusive creature. The bunyip has also been a part of aboriginal oral traditions for centuries, with different communications having their own variations of this legend. It has also become a part of Australian colonial folklore and has been mentioned in various accounts and documents from European settlers. 
In the 19th century, the bunyip became a subject of fascination and speculation among European settlers, leading to numerous alleged sightings and hoaxes. Naturalists and explorers attempted to classify it as a real creature, but these efforts were unsuccessful. And the bunyip remains firmly in the realm of folklore and legend. Today, the bunyip is seen as part of Australian's cultural heritage and is often featured in literature, art, and popular culture. The Thunderbird The Thunderbird is a legendary creature from the folklore of various indigenous cultures in North America, particularly among the tribes of the Pacific Northwest and the Plains regions. It is often described as a large, powerful bird with wingspans that can be enormous, sometimes said to reach as wide as 20 feet or more. The Thunderbird is believed to be associated with thunderstorms, is considered a supernatural or spiritual being in Native American mythology. Different tribes have their own variations of this Thunderbird legend, with unique attributes and stories. In many accounts, the Thunderbird is seen as a symbol of power, strength, and protection. It is often associated with thunder, lightning, and storms, and its flapping wings are said to create thunderclaps. The Thunderbird is an important figure in the oral traditions and ceremonies of many Native American cultures. It is often depicted in various arts, totem poles, and other cultural artifacts, and its symbolism varies amongst tribes. Some view the Thunderbird as a malevolent and protective force, while others see it as a more fearsome and powerful entity. Fresno Nightcrawlers The Fresno Nightcrawlers, also known as the Fresno Aliens or Fresno Creatures, are cryptids or paranormal entities that gained attention through a series of alleged video sightings in Fresno, California and other various locations. The first known video footage of these creatures surfaced in the early 2000s. The Fresno Nightcrawlers are described as a tall, slender, humanoid figures with long, thin legs and minimal upper body which appears to consist of a head-like region with no visible arms. They have a distinctive, almost puppet-like appearance. The creatures are often depicted as walking or floating smoothly and eerily through the footage. While the video footage and photographs of the Fresno Nightcrawlers have generated significant interest and different speculation, there is a high degree of skepticism surrounding these sightings. Some believe that the videos may be hoaxes or fabrications created using special effects or puppetry techniques. Others suggest that the creatures could be an elaborate prank or a form of artistic expression. The Fresno Nightcrawlers remain a topic of discussion within the realms of paranormal investigations, cryptid studies, and online forums dedicated to mysterious phenomena. The Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus this entry is like if I were to say the most random words that came to my head, but it actually has a real story, so let's just get into it. The Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus is a captivating example of an internet hoax. This fictional creature was presented as a rare and endangered species of octopus that had a highly unusual habitat. The trees of the rainforests in Washington State specifically in the Olympic National Forest. This hoax included elaborate details about the octopus's behavior, anatomy, and the unique adaptations to its arboreal lifestyle. There was even a dedicated website with photographs and information designated to make the hoax appear even more convincing. The story of the Pacific Northwest tree octopus was never intended to deceive or mislead in a malicious way. Instead, it was created with the intention of demonstrating how easily misinformation can spread online, especially when people do not critically evaluate the information they come across. The creators of the hoax sought to use this humor and absurdity to engage the public and provoke them into thinking more critically about the information they encounter on the internet, but overall pretty funny cryptid. Dogman The Michigan Dogman is a legendary creature deeply ingrained in the folklore and local legends of Michigan, particularly the northwestern part of the Lower Peninsula. Its origins date back to the late 19th century, with an alleged sighting in 1887 that has since become the cornerstone of its myth. Described as a towering, seven-foot-tall, bipedal entity, the Michigan Dogman combines canine and human characteristics. Witnesses claim it possesses a wolf-like or dog-like head and body while maintaining a humanoid torso. Its eyes are said to be the most striking feature, often described as glowing blue or amber. Perhaps the most spine-tingling aspect of the Michigan Dogman is its howl, a chilling and blood-curdling sound that some witnesses liken to the human scream or wail. 
this eerie vocalization adds to the creature's mystique and contributes to its aura of fear. Also, the Michigan Dogman is believed to follow a 10-year cycle, with reported sightings occurring primarily in years ending with the number 7. These sightings have been documented in several locations throughout Michigan, particularly in the northwestern quadrant of the Lower Peninsula, and the legend of the Michigan Dogman has evolved over the years, including various stories, songs, and even a documentary. While it remains an integral part of the Michigan folklore and culture, who knows if it's really out there. All right, now onto tier four, starting off with the Oklahoma octopus. The Oklahoma octopus is a cryptid generally said to inhabit some freshwater man-made lakes of Oklahoma, where it attacks and kills unsuspecting swimmers. There is really no existing footage of it or pictures or anything like that, but and this kind of would be unique because it would make the octopus from Oklahoma, the only freshwater dwelling octopus species. Some skeptics doubt the existence of such an octopus existing in Oklahoma somewhere. However, octopi have been recorded, at least for brief periods of time, living in freshwater environments. One such case involves a common octopus being caught at Lake Conway in Falker County, Arkansas. The animal was most likely released as a pet that survived long enough to cling onto the gates of the lake's dam, but for the Oklahoma octopus, who knows if there's a octopus out there killing people, but I doubt it. Everybody is half dead. Everybody the Dover Demon The Dover Demon is a cryptid or creature that has become known through a series of sightings in Dover, Massachusetts during April 1977. It gained its name from the town where it was first reported. Described as a small humanoid being, the Do Dover Demon was said to stand approximately three to four feet tall. It was hairless, peach-colored, or pinkish-gray skin, which made it stand out even more in the moonlight. Witness reported it as its limbs as spindly, with long, thin fingers and toes. However, the creature's most striking feature was its head, characterized by large, glowing orange or green eyes. It was noted for its absence of a visible nose or mouth and a head shape sometimes described as resembling a watermelon. The sightings of the Dover Demon occurred on the nights of April 21st and April 22nd in 1977. Several young people in Dover claimed to have encountered this mysterious creature while driving or walking alone at night. These encounters generated significant attention, both locally and in the media at the time. Since the initial sighting, there have been various theories and debates regarding the nature of the Dover Demon. Skeptics have suggested that the sightings might be the result of misidentifications, such as young animals with unusual proportions or even owls that can appear strange in certain lighting conditions. Others have proposed the possibility of hoaxes or imaginative nightmare time experiences. Despite the ongoing discussions and different speculations, the Dover Demon remains an enigmatic cryptid in the world of cryptozoology. But in my personal opinion, it could just be a small guy running around in the woods somewhere. But let me know your opinion down below. The Shadow Folk Shadow people are supernatural shadow-like humanoid figures that, according to believers, are seen flickering on walls and ceilings in the viewer's peripheral vision. They are often reported moving with quick, jerky movements and quickly disintegrate into walls or mirrors. They are often believed to be evil and aggressive in nature, although a few people consider them to be a form of a guardian angel. In 2011, the apparitions were described as one of the most regularly reported paranormal phenomena in the United States, so a lot of people have seen this. But this is attributed to occasional reports of the Coast to Coast AM show, where paranormal researcher Heidi Hollis has been interviewed several times on the subject of shadow people. Hollis believes that shadow people have always existed, that they feed upon emotions of fear, and that they can be repelled by thinking positively. Others believe that shadow people may be an extra-dimensional inhabitant of another universe. The stories of shadow people have been compared to those of the Ravenmacher, a witch from Cherokee Indian mythology who sometimes appears to be shadowy phantom, and the Islamic Jinn. But have you ever seen the shadow people? Champ Champ, often referred to as Champy, is a cryptid that has been part of the folklore and legends surrounding Lake Champlain. 
situated on the border of Vermont, New York, and Quebec, Canada. This creature is often described as a lake monster, sharing similarities with other legendary creatures like the Loch Ness Monster. Champ is typically depicted as a serpent-like creature with long, scaly body, although there have been variations in why witness accounts. Its size is said to range from 10 to 30 feet or more making it quite imposing. Sightings of Champ date back to the Native American folklore, and reports of encounters have persisted into the modern era. Witnesses describe mysterious splashes, wakes, and unexplained disturbances on the lake's surface as possible evidence of the creature's presence. Yowie and damn, we're getting the whole Bigfoot family tree in this iceberg, but the Yowie is a cryptid deeply rooted in the folklore and oral traditions of Austrian Aboriginal culture, often compared to the Bigfoot of North American folklore. The Yowie is described as a large ape-like or humanoid creature with a robust build, covered in hair or fur that can range in color from brown to black or reddish to brown. Reports of Yowie sightings have been made in various parts of Australia, particularly in the remote and wilderness areas. Witnesses describe Yowie as a tall, with some accounts to suggesting heights of 7 to 12 feet, so this guy is huge, and they are generally considered to be reclusive and elusive, avoiding human contact, and in addition to their physical depictions, Yowies are associated with eerie vocalizations, including howls, growls, and grunts, which add to the mystique and fear surrounding these creatures. Black Shuck, also known as just Shuck, is a prominent figure in English folklore, particularly in the region of East Anglia. This legendary creature is often described as a ghostly, imposing black dog. Its appearance varies in size, but some accounts depict it as being as large as a horse. What sets Black Shuck apart is its fiery, glowing red eyes that pierce the night sky. Shrouded in mystery, Black Shuck is associated with supernatural phenomena. It is known to materialize suddenly and mysteriously, often at night, and then vanish without a trace. Encounters with Black Shuck are laden with ominous significance, and it is frequently considered a harbinger of doom or death. Some versions of the legend suggest that anyone who meets its gaze or makes physical contact with the creature will meet a tragic end quickly. The Black Shuck legend has been regional variations through East Anglia, with different stories emphasizing either its malevolent or neutral nature. The origins of the legend are ancient and elusive, and it remains a compelling figure in English folklore. Over the years, references to Black Shuck have found their way into literature, music, and various forms of media, continue to captivate and chill those who encounter this spectral hound in the realm of ghost stories and the different superstitions. Wendigos and Skinwalkers I don't know why these aren't two separate entries, but who cares, let's get into it. Wendigos and Skinwalkers are both figures from Native American folklore, each with distinct origins and characteristics. Okay, let's just get into the Wendigo side of this. The Wendigo is a creature primarily associated with the Native Americans of North America. It is typically found in the northern regions of the United States and Canada. In appearance, the Wendigo is described as a tall, emaciated, and monstrous being with pale, gaunt skin. It is said to have glowing eyes, long limbs, and sharp, bony features. One of the most infamous aspects of the Wendigo is its insubitable hunger for human flesh. In some legends, individuals who resort to cannibalism in extreme conditions are believed to transform into Wendigos. The Wendigo is associated with cold in winter and is believed to possess supernatural powers, including shape-shifting, mimicry, and the ability to control the weather. And now onto the skinwalker part of the side. The concept of the skinwalker is primarily associated with the Navajo, people of the southwestern United States, particularly in the Navajo Nation. It is sometimes referred to as the Yi Natalushi in the Navajo language. Skinwalkers are often believed to be witches or malevolent practitioners of dark magic who can transform into animals. They have the ability to take on the shape of various creatures such as wolves, coyotes, birds, or other different animals. Skinwalkers are known for their shape-shifting abilities and are believed to have other supernatural powers such as mind control manipulation of dark forces, and the ability to bring harm to others through curses. Both Wendigos and Skinwalkers have deeply rooted in the culture and spiritual beliefs of their respective indigenous groups. They are often associated with cautionary tales, and they are not to be taken lightly. The Ogo 
Pogo is a legendary creature or cryptid that is said to inhabit Okanagan Lake in British Columbia, Canada. It is often described as a long serpentine lake monster or sea serpent. And this seems to be a trend on the iceberg. Things in lakes that people think are serpents, but who knows. The legendary of Ogobogo has been part of the indigenous folklore of the region for centuries, with various First Nation tribes having their own versions of this creature. The physical description of Ogopogo typically includes a large serpent-like body with a series of humps or coils that can be seen above the surface of the water. Witnesses have described it as a dark, greenish-black color and a head resembling that of a snake or horse. Sightings of Ogo Pogo have been reported for over a century, describing the creature swimming or moving through the waters of Okanagan Lake. However, many reports are anecdotal and lack concrete photographic or scientific evidence. The legend of Ogo Pogo predates European settlement in the region and has deep roots in the folklore of the indigenous Silex, Okanagan people. In their oral traditions, the creature is known as, I'm going to mispronounce this, but Nahatik and it is considered a powerful and sometimes malevolent water spirit. Ogo Pogo has become popular and enduring part of the Canadian folklore, attracting tourists and cryptozoology enthusiasts to the Okanagan Valley, where they hope to catch a glimpse of the creature or learn more about its history. Skeptics often propose natural explanations for Ogopogo sightings, such as misidentifications of logs, waves, or other different aquatic animals, and some suggest that Ogopogo may be a large surgeon or an undiscovered species of fish. And now on to tier 5, starting off with the Hopskinsville Goblin. The Hopskinville Goblin, also known as the Kelly Hopskinville Encounter, is a well-known incident in the realm of UFO and paranormal encounters. It took place during the night of August 21st through 22nd, 1955, in Hopskinville, Kentucky, United States of America. The primary witness to this strange event were members of the Sutton family, including Elmer quote, Lucky Sutton and his wife, Vera, along with family and friends who were visiting. In total, there were eight adults and three children present for this event. The incident began when the family noticed unusual glowing lights in the night sky, which they initially mistook for a meteor shower. Later in the evening, they claimed to have encountered small humanoid figures. These beings were described as approximately three feet tall, with distinct features such as large heads, pointy ears, glowing yellow eyes, long, thin arms, silver-colored skin, and what appeared to be metallic clothing. The encounter took a frightening turn when the creatures allegedly approached the farmhouse and made strange noises. Feeling threatened, the family and their guests fired at the creatures with shotguns, but to their astonishment, the creatures showed no signs of injury and continued to advance. Terrified, the Suttons contacted the local police, who investigated the scene, but found no evidence of the creatures. The witnesses were genuinely shaken by the experience. The story gained widespread attention in the media, often being reported as encounter with extraterrestrial beings or, quote, green little men. It sparked debate and skepticism with various theories proposed to explain the events, including misidentifications of natural phenomena or animals, intoxication affecting the witnesses' perceptions, or even elaborate hoaxes. The Hopskinville Goblin incident remains a subject of fascination, debate, and speculation in the fields of UFOlogy and the unexplained, attracting both believers and skeptics alike. Rods. In the context of cryptids, quote, rods are not creatures but rather a phenomenon related to unidentified flying objects, otherwise known as UFOs. These rods are typically described as elongated, cylindrical objects that are sometimes captured in photographs and videos. They have been the subject of debate and speculation. The appearance of rods is characterized by their long, thin, and cylindrical shape, often being ribbed or segmented appearances. These are usually described as being translucent or semi-transparent. Claims of rods gained prominence in the 1990s when individuals asserted that they had captured these objects in their photographs and videos. These sightings often occurred during outdoor events or in natural settings. Skeptics argue that rods are not actual creatures or objects, but instead optical illusions or artifacts created by the way digital cameras capture fast-moving objects. They contend that this effect is produced when a swift-moving object is captured in multiple frames, resulting in the appearance of a continuous, elongated shape. Despite numerous claims and photographic evidence of these rods, there is no scientific evidence to substantiate 
their existence as distinct unidentified life forms or aircrafts. The U-28 monster. The U-28 creature is not the name of an individual monster, but rather the name given to a single sighting of a yet-to-be-identified beast. This chance encounter with an animal that would later be referred to as U-28 creature took place in the early portion of World War I after a military engagement between the U-Boat 28 and the British steamer Libertarian, the captain of the U-Boat, Commander Freyherr George G. von Frostner, described the encounter in the following passage taken from his log books. Quote, on July 30th, 1915, our U-28 torpedoed the British steamer Libertarian, which was carrying a rich cargo across the North Atlantic. This steamer sank so swiftly that its bow stuck up vertically into the air. Moments later, the hull of the Libertarian disappeared. The wreckage remained beneath the water for approximately 25 seconds, at a depth that was clearly impossible to assess when suddenly there was a violent explosion which shot pieces of debris, among them a gigantic aquatic animal, out of the water to a height of approximately 80 feet. At that moment, I had within me, in the conning tower, six of my officers of the watch, including the chief engineer, the navigator, and the helmsman. Simultaneously, we all drew one another's attention to this wonder of the seas, which was writhing and struggling among the debris. We were unable to identify the creature, but all of us agreed that it resembled an aquatic crocodile, which was about 60 feet long, with four limbs resembling large webbed feet a long, pointed tail, and a head which was also tapered to a point. Unfortunately, we were not able to take a photograph, for the animal sank out of sight after 10 or 15 seconds. And that's the end of the story. But some investigators have theorized that this encounter could indicate a surviving specimen of Plesiosaur or Mosasaurus, both of which are thought to have resembled gigantic crocodiles. The fossil record of these creatures also seems to indicate that their spines were very flexible, which could account for the more serpentine-like movement of the U-28 creature and other so-called sea serpents sometimes spotted in this area of the world. There are also a handful of researchers who have suggested that this creature may have been transported by its steamer, only to be released into the ocean when the ship exploded. The small number of investigators have stated that any creature swimming in the ocean would more likely keep its distance from a naval battle and subsequent sinking of a ship due to the gunfire. And for the U-28 creature to have been blown out of the water upon the Libertarian's explosion, the creature would have been swimming almost directly under the sinking ship just seconds after it was sunk by a torpedo fire, though it is unclear why a British steamer would be transporting a 60-foot aquatic creature across the Atlantic, it is safe to say that at this point in time, the mystery of the U-28 creature may never be solved, with all eyewitnesses of this encounter having passed away and the Libertarian resting at the bottom of the North Atlantic. Perhaps one day, the discovery of a creature similar to that described by the crew of the U-28 may shed new light on this encounter. However, we still may never know if that new discovery is what Captain reported that day or it is something else, still unknown, lurks in the depths of this last great unexplored region of planet Earth, the ocean. Nin Gen. The Ninjin is a cryptid or creature from Japanese folklore, and it is known for its mysterious and enigmatic nature. The word Ninjin in Japanese means human, and this cryptid is said to be humanoid appearance, albeit with some distinct characteristics. Descriptions of this Ninjin typically depict it as an enormous humanoid being with pale bluish white or translucent skin. It is said to possess human-like facial features, including eyes and nose and a mouth. Witnesses often mention its long, slim arms and fingers, and some reports suggest the presence of hair or fins on its head. The size of the Ninjin can vary in different accounts, with some reports describing it as reaching lengths up to 30 meters, but that's up to 98 feet. So this thing is humongous. These cryptids are believed to inhabit the cold waters of the Antarctic Ocean, particularly near Antarctica and the surrounding regions. Sightings of the Ninjin are infrequent, and there is limited photographic or video evidence. The creature is often described as shy and elusive, avoiding human contact, while some believe that the Ninjin could be previously undiscovered species of a giant sea creature, skeptics propose alternative explanations. These include misidentifications of icebergs, unusual lighting conditions, or unknown marine animals. Some suggest that the Ninjin may be a product of folklore and modern urban legends. The Ninjin gained popularity on the internet during the mid-2000s, with images and stories about this creature circulating on online forums and social medias. 
Ahul. The Ahul is a cryptid creature from Indonesian folklore, particularly associated with the island of Java. Descriptions of the Ahul portray it as a large, bat-like being with leathery wings and dark fur-covered skin. It is said to have an impressive wingspan, often reported as exceeding 10 feet. This is a mysterious creature is believed to inhabit remote, densely forested regions of Java, typically in monotonous regions or hilly areas. Reports suggest that it is primarily active at night, exhibiting nocturnal behavior. Witnesses have described the Ahul's vocalizations at a distinct, mournful cry that sound like Ahul, given its rise to the name. Despite its prominent place in Indonesian folklore and local traditions, the Ahul is classified as a cryptid and not a real animal. The Loveland Frog, also known as the Loveland Frogman, is a cryptid creature associated with Loveland, Ohio. This creature is described as a humanoid or frog-like being standing approximately 3 to 4 feet tall. It is said to have leathery skin, webbed hands and feet, and a frog-like head with large, bubbleless eyes. This legend of the Loveland Frog is based on reported sightings that date back to the early 1970s near the Little Miami River in Loveland. Witnesses claim to have encountered this mysterious creature, and some reports it even said it has a wand or object emitting sparks. Descriptions of the Loveland Frog can vary, with some witnesses emphasizing its frog-like features while others focus on its humanoid characteristics. Over the years, this cryptid has become part of local folklore and has made occasional appearances in popular culture, including books, documentaries, and discussions within the cryptozoology community. Skeptics offer alternative ex explanations for this sighting, including potential misidentifications of known animals, hoaxes, or optical illusions. Some believe that the Loveland Frog legend may be based on exaggerated or distorted accounts of encounters with large frogs or other wildlife. Everybody is half demon. Everybody the Wampus Cat the Wampus Cat is a mythical creature from American folklore, specifically associated with the Appalachian region of the United States. It is described as a mysterious and fearsome creature with a combination of feline and human characteristics. In this legend, the Wampus Cat is often portrayed as a large creature with the body of a mountain lion or panther in the face or upper body of a woman. It is, has its origins in the folklore of various indigenous people in the region, including the Cherokee and Creek tribes. In some versions of the legend, the Wampus Cat is the result of a woman who engaged in forbidden rituals and was transformed into this creature as punishment. The Wampus Cat is typically associated with nocturnal encounters in the wilderness and is sometimes believed to be a symbol of caution for those who venture into the wild. It may also see as a harbinger of bad luck. Pope Lick Monster The Pope Lick Monster, also known as the Goat Man of Pope Lick, is a legendary creature associated with the area around the Pope Lick Trestle in Louisville, Kentucky. This cryptid is described as a hybrid being with the lower body of a goat, including cloven hooves, and the upper body of a human. So it's similar to the Goat Man, but different in a little bit ways. It is said to have both human and goat-like facial features, with some accounts mentioning long, shaggy fur. Legends of the Pope Lick Monster have circulated for several decades, contributing to the status as a cryptid. However, these reports are generally anecdotal, and there is no concrete evidence to support the existence of such a weird creature. One particularly eerie aspect of the legend involves claims that the Pope Lick monster has the ability to hypnotize or lure victims onto the nearby railroad tracks when they are being struck by an oncoming train. This has led the creature being associated with danger and fatalities. The exact origin of the Pope Lick monster legend remains unclear and it has become a prominent part of the local folklore. Now on to tier 6, the Nandi Bear. The Nandi Bear is a cryptic creature deeply embedded in the folklore of East Africa, particularly among the Nandi people in Kenya and nearby regions. This elusive and fearsome predator is described in various different ways, with common characteristics including shaggy dark fur, a head resembling that of a dog or a hyena, and powerful claws or teeth. Reports generally suggest that it is larger than a known African carnivores. Local lore places the Nandi bear in remote monotonous areas of East Africa, particularly in Kenya. It is often linked with rugged forested terrain. The Nandi bear is notorious for its predatory behavior, targeting both human and livestock alike, which has contributed to its reputation as a threat to communities living in or near its presumed habitat. 
The legend of the Nandi bear holds cultural significance among the Nandi people in neighboring East African communities, with stories passed down through generations. Despite its status as a cryptid, there is no scientific evidence confirming its existence, and cryptozoologists and researchers intrigued by enigmatic creatures find the Nandi bear to be an intriguing subject of study. Skeptics suggest that reported encounters with the Nandi bear is just a misidentification of known African wildlife, such as hyenas or leopards. They argue that the varying depictions of the creature may stem from different interpretations of sightings. The Ozark Howler is a cryptic creature associated with the Ozark Mountains, a region spanning parts of Arkansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma in the United States. Descriptions of this legendary creature vary, but it is often depicted as a large, dark-furred animal with some accounts emphasizing its cat-like features. Characteristics commonly attributed to the Ozark Howler include glowing red eyes or orange, sharp claws, and the ability to emit eerie howling or screaming sounds at night. Sightings and reports of the Ozark Howler are largely anecdotal and have been passed down through local folklore. There is no evidence to show this creature's existence, but the Ozark Howler holds cultural significance in the Ozark region and has piqued the interest of cryptozoologists and enthusiasts to explore mysterious and unexplained creatures. Skeptics often propose that reports of the Ozark Howler may result from an misidentification of known wildlife species such as cougars or black bears. It's kind of similar to the last one we covered, but they also may attribute the creature's strange vocalizations to other natural sounds. The UK Big Cats, or the United Kingdom Big Cats, refers to a phenomenon in the United Kingdom where there have been numerous reports and sightings of large exotic looking feline creatures that are not native to the region. These sightings often describe animals resembling big cats such as panthers, pumas, or black leopards. While the UK does not have not native big cats, cat species, the sightings have persisted for decades, sparking intrigue and debate. Various descriptions of these creatures have been provided by witnesses, including different sizes and colorations, ranging from black panthers to pumas and lynx-like animals. The absence of native big cats in the United Kingdom has led to speculation about the origins of these mysterious creatures. Several theories attempt to explain the presence of the UK big cats. Some suggest that these animals may have escaped or been released from private collections or zoos. Others propose that these are descendants of animals brought to the UK during World War II to manage deer populations. Cryptozoologists who study creatures with limited or disputed evidence of existence have taken entries in the United Kingdom big cats. Some believe that there may be a breeding population of these big cats in the United Kingdom though this remains unconfirmed by scientific evidence. Official wildlife agencies often regard these sightings as anecdotal, and there have been limited systematic investigation into this phenomenon. The UK big cats continue to be a topic of fascination, sparking discussion among enthusiasts, researchers, and skeptics alike. The Lizard Man the Lizard Man, also known as the Lizard Man of Scape or Swamp, is a cryptid creature associated with the swamps and woods of Lee County, South Carolina in the United States. Descriptions of this legendary creature typically portray it as a humanoid reptilian being standing about 7 feet tall. It is said to have green scaly skin, three fingers on each hand, sharp claws, red glowing eyes, and a mouth filled with sharp teeth. The legend of the lizard man gained prominence in the late 1980s when several individuals reported encounters with this creature. Reports ranged from sightings of a large lizard-like figure to claims of property damage and vehicle attacks. One of the most well-known incidents involved a teenager named Christopher Davis, who stated that he encountered the lizard man while changing a flat tire near Scape or Swamp in 1988. He reported that the creature attacked his car, leaving scratches and bite marks. The legend of the lizard man had become part of South Carolina's folklore and has attracted interest from cryptozoologists and enthusiasts of an unexplained phenomena. Despite skepticism and lack of concrete evidence, the mystery surrounding the lizard man continues to captivate the imaginations of the people around Scape or Swamp. Phantom Kangaroo The Phantom Kangaroo is a cryptid or legendary creature that has been reported in various parts of the United States, particularly in the Midwest and the Great Plains area. What makes this phenomenon intriguing is that kangaroos are not native to the United States, obviously, and there are no known established populations of kangaroos in the regions where sightings have been reported. Witnesses have described these phantom kangaroos as creatures that closely resemble actual kangaroos, with their distinctive hopping locomotive and their powerful hind legs. 
However, there was a significant variation in the descriptions, with some accounts mentioning smaller marsupial-like creatures. Explanations for these sightings have included the misidentifications of known wildlife. Nonetheless, there is no evidence to show that kangaroos ever were or are in this area. The phantom kangaroo sightings have become part of local folklore and urban legends in some regions, adding to the allure of unexplained and mysterious phenomena. Cryptozoologists and researchers interested in cryptids has also taken interest in these reports, although the phenomenon remains unexplained and anecdotal in nature. All right, now into the second to last tier, tier seven. And if you see if I'm skipping any, it's because I really couldn't find anything on them or they're too similar to the ones I already covered. So starting it off with the Belarusian sky squid. In 1985, an Aeroflot plane reported sighting a brisk bright light while flying over Minsk en route from Tbilisi to Tallinn. The mysterious light was sighted again on December 24th, 1999, relieving itself to be a cigar shaped UFO also known as air rods, that was sighted above the skies of Vitebsk, Belarus. This particular creature exhibited bioluminescent and semi-transparently qualities similar to that of jellyfish or squids. And to be honest, that's all I could find on it. So basically, over Belarus, someone was flying in a plane and someone saw a UFO, I mean, which is an unidentified air object, and it kind of looked like a squid. So that's the best explanation for it. The Bat Beast of Kent is a creature that has been the subject of local folklore and urban legend in the county of Kent located in southeastern England. Similar to other cryptids or legendary creatures, the Bat Beast is not recognized by science, but it is reminiscent of mythical creatures that known animals. Descriptions of the Bat Beast of Kent vary, but common characteristics include a humanoid or bat-like appearance, large wings, sharp claws, and the ability to fly. These descriptions often evoke images of creatures such as bats, gargoyles, or even humanoid vampires. The Mexican Flying Horse The Daily Mail has reported that a UFO resembling a flying horse has been spotted. The object in question is the red circle, close to one of Mexico's most active volcanoes. The dark object appeared to have two legs and was seen hovering into view out of nowhere as Volcano Colima, 300 miles west of Mexico City, spewed out a smoke. Captured on webcam after Colima erupted this week, this enigmatic equine vanished moments later. UFO enthusiast Eufroso Gonzalez Carrasso said, There has been a fair bit of activity around these volcanoes, and this latest sighting just adds to the mystery. There must be something about volcanoes that draws extraterrestrials to them. Perhaps they are collecting samples from a planet to take back home. Skeptics insist that this object is neither an alien spaceship nor a Pegasus like creature from mythology. Instead, they suggest that it might be anything from an amateur drone or just a speck of dirt on a camera lens. Not surprisingly, the Mexican authorities stand by the drone theory. A spokesman from the county's civil protection of the Ministry of Interior said, quote, It is most likely a drone of some sort. We are looking into it. So, what do you think? Near the volcano, there's a Mexican flying horse, or just a drone or some sort of debris that flew out? And now, onto the last and final tier, Tier 8. And by the way, if you're not already, subscribe. I mean, you're already an hour into the video, so might as well. And like the video, helps a lot. Anyways, let's get into it. Starting off with the Green Knock Catman. The Green Knock Catman is a cryptid or creature associated with the town of Greenlock in Iverclid, Scotland. It is described as large, black, or dark-colored cat-like creature, often larger than a typical domesticated cat and resembling a panther or a cougar. Witnesses claim it has sharp teeth, glowing eyes, and a sleek, muscular build. Sightings of the Greenlock Catman have been reported sporadically since the 1960s. These sightings occur in various different locations around Green Knock and its surrounding, including forests, parks, and residential neighborhoods. Descriptions of the creature vary, with some accounts describing a more mundane Albert cat, black cat, 
while others suggest a more supernatural or phantom-like presence. Skeptics often propose that reported sightings could be the result of a misidentification of a large domestic cat or other different animals. The possibility of black panthers, which are not native to the United Kingdom obviously, but is sometimes considered as a source of confusion. The legend of the Green Knot Catman has become part of local folklore and occasionally attracts media attention when sightings are reported. While it remains a subject of curiosity and debate within cryptozoology, there is no evidence to back it up. Nonetheless, it continues to capture the imagination of those who encounter it in local stories and accounts. Bigfoot equals giant land gibbon. The suggestion that Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, could be linked to a giant land gibbon is not a widely recognized or scientifically sustained hypothesis. Bigfoot is a cryptid or legendary creature most commonly described as a large ape-like being that walks upright on two legs as we've covered earlier, but it has a predominantly featured in North American folklore and has been at the center of numerous alleged sightings and investigations over the years. Conversely, gibbons are small to medium-sized apes primarily found in Southeast Asia and parts of South Asia. These primates are renowned for their agility, long arms, and distinctive vocalizations. However, gibbons are neither large nor closely related to any type of creature that is typically described as Bigfoot. The mainstream scientific perspective on Bigfoot is that sightings of this cryptid are more likely due to misidentifications of known animals, hoaxes, or the perpetual of cultural myths. While there are individuals who firmly believe in the existence of Bigfoot and have dedicated time and effort into the search of evidence, the scientific community generally lacks conclusive empirical proof that Bigfoot exists or it's replaced by a giant land gibbon. In summary, the concept that Bigfoot might be connected to a giant land gibbon is really not that likely because the United States or North America as a whole doesn't have giant land gibbons in it because they're all the way in South Asia. I feel like we'd know that, but I may be wrong. Let me know down in the comments. The Beast of Tunbridge Wells is a term used to describe a series of reported sightings of a mysterious large black cat or panther-like creature in and around the town of Tunbridge Wells in Kent, England. And there's something about large cats that just are always hanging around the United Kingdom. I wonder why. But these sightings have captured the attention and imagination of local residents and the wider public. Reports of the beast of Tunbridge Wells date back to the early 2000s, so this is pretty recent, with witnesses describing a creature that is typically large, black, and cat-like in appearance. Some have estimated its size to be around 3 to 5 feet in length, so not that big, but still pretty intimidating. However, there have been variations in the descriptions provided by different witnesses, with some describing a smaller, domestic-sized black cat. These sightings have generated discussions and concerns among local residents, particularly regarding the potential risks posed by a creature to pets and different livestock. Skeptics often propose that the reported sightings may be the result of misidentifications of domestic cats or other known animals, and that's happened a lot in this iceberg, but whatever. It's worth noting that large exotic cats like panthers are not native to the United Kingdom, and there is no established population of such animals in the region, so it, once again, it's pretty unlikely. But obviously, I could be wrong. Over the years, the beast of Tunbridge Wells has become something of an urban legend, with sightings and reports circulating through word of mouth and social medias. Despite the lack of evidence, it remains a subject of curiosity and intrigue, drawing the interest of those fascinated by cryptozoology and different urban legends. Okay, this one is just, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, I'm not even going to try to say it. So, you see it on screen, that's what it is, I'm not even going to attempt to say this. And this is the greatest and most terrifying of beings in Kawanana folklore. I know I mispronounced this and I'll mispronounce a lot of names in this because uh, just look at the words. Folklore. His name is alternatively translated as cannibal at the north end of the world. And quote, he who first ate man at the mouth of the river every more Pacific manifestation of the essence of humanity. That's a pretty large name, but it is a more satanized and empiristic version. Maneater statistically describes him. He is central figure of the enigmatic Hamasta or cannibal ceremony. The appearance of that thing is horrifying. He is anthropomorphic or bear-like in appearance. His entire body is covered in gaping, snapping, bloody mouths, and his call is hap, hap, hap. Quote, eat, 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 translated. 
His house is covered in red cedar bark with blood red smoke pouring out of his kit chimney. He is attended by a number of equally vile creatures. His wife, Komaga, wearing red and white cedar bark, and his slave, King Alalalala, bring him his human meals. And I'm not even going to pronounce another name because it's equally as long as the original, and it's translated to the raven at the north end of the world pecks out his victim's eyes. Hokla of the sky, a giant crane, cracks skulls with his very long beak and devours his the brains. The crooked beak of the sky and Nesalat, the grizzly bear of the door, stand guard. These monstrous bird ogres are all an extension of that thing himself. They are his eyes and ears, and nothing can hide from them. A wise shaman once encountered that thing while hunting in the mountains. He was captured by Quagamine, who shouted to that thing, Come and devour him. The man manages to squirm out of the Quagama's grip, losing all of his hair in the process, and he was chased by that thing through forests and caves. Eventually, he tricked, oh my gosh, I'm tired of saying this, that thing, sorry, luring him into a pit and trap. The ogre and his wife, who fell into a pit and were incarcerated. The shaman blew into the ashes and then become the bloodthirsty mosquitoes of the earth. The Hamasa ceremony itself tells a tale of that thing possessing the young initiate, making him go through a frenzy where he gnashes, bites, and shouts, hap, hap, hap. He is then symbolically exercised, tamed, and inducted into the society. That thing and his attendants are represented with specular, ornately carved masks worn by the Hamasta dancers. And I'm not sure if that made much sense. It kind of made some sense to me, but sorry if that didn't make that much sense but that's the only thing i could find on the internet on this so i hope that made enough sense and the last entry of the iceberg the black carpet it has been described by divers as a thousand foot long group of jet black microorganisms with thin feelers it has been compared to the porky g's man o war in terms of shape the black carpet is thought to be related to early single-celled organisms that lived millions of years ago in the ocean. It is also thought to be related to the bloop. And that black carpet just covers everything around the divers and they can't see anything. So it, this one is a little bit, bit more based in reality, I would say, but I'm not sure. And anyways, that wraps up the Cryptid Iceberg Explained. I really hope you enjoyed it. It was pretty fun to make and it was fun to research and stuff like that. I found it pretty interesting. It's kind of related to the Urban Legend Iceberg, but not really. And I kind of just wanted to cover it just for my own sake. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment. Definitely helps the video a lot. And leave feedback down below on what I can improve on and stuff like that. And anyways, until next time, see ya.